Real people, real celebrities, real talk. Join the Breakfast Club. Weekday morning, 6 to 10. Go. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. Yep. We are the Breakfast Club. We got our friend to the room, Mr. Kevin Hart. Kevin yeah. Hart, yeah. Oh, he turned on. Yeah, yeah. I told you. I told you once you say go. Thirty seconds ago. Yeah, Kev was, I heard somebody say Kev's tired. I said there's no such thing as Kevin no Hart being tired. No such thing. When and it's he called us a holes. He well. did. He said I did not. He called I don't know. What you, I have no idea. What you, get, where's the record? <laughs> Where, <laughs> show me proof. And now, Envy doesn't like you anymore because of the cheek implant thing. Now, what did I do? You said he had. Cheek oh, you, last time yeah, you don't even remember. Two years ago, you said he had cheek implant. Very true. And everyone to this day. Very true. I'm going to stand by that. I'm going to stand by that. Now, now, uh, three number one movies yeah. this year. Congrats. Hey, thank you, well, man. Well, last year now. 2014. Yeah, 2014. 2014. It's a new year. And you, still, 2015. And you were still on time this morning. Yes, sir. I don't yes. play around, man. I don't play around. I'm a punctual, I'm a punctual gentleman, man. <laughs> 2015, we're doing exactly what we did in 2014, but bigger. Oh, New York terms. <laughs> no, no, nobody else. Yeah, oh. Now, now you confused me a couple weeks ago. What we I do? know you as the no man. Yes, sir. You know you're the no man. You're not the yes man. Yeah, you're the people that tell them what they let's need Let's go. To hear. Okay, but you told TMZ yes. in reference to the Sony executive's email that yes. um, you know I'm politically correct. Always. Since when, Kev? PC. PC, listen, There's you have no record of me ever saying something that got me in trouble. There's right. nothing True. that I've ever said where people could go, Yo, why would Kevin do this to say that? Or, Yo, why would he talk about this guy and talk about that? There's nothing. You're, it'll never happen. Uh, I purposely keep myself out of harm's way. So with all uh, all Sony questions, I handle it the way I'm supposed to handle it. And before they even come today, I handle it the way I'm supposed to handle it, which is I'm a business. I'm a businessman. And in a business, you handle yourself the way that you're supposed to. Which is as a business. I'm a brand. And within being a brand, you always protect yourself and make sure that your brand, your entity, which is you, is always protected and, and valued and treated as such. That's what I was. I'm sure you have some crazy emails and text messages mm -hmm. in your phone. Too. I got one that says, yo, Angela, don't don't read this email. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did those emails make you feel the first time you, you, you heard about the emails? Was I like could give two, two, two cares, man. Listen, mm -hmm. I'm on... You guys, listen, right now, you all work, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. You all work, and there's a negotiation before you guys come to work. There's right. a contract that's that's negotiated from your from your side and from their side. Mm -hmm. There's terms that have to be met. There's something that you ask for. There's something that they say they don't want to give. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you guys battle until these terms are met. Right. If you don't think for two seconds. Oh, yeah. That these people on this side say things about what you're asking for, you're stupid. Yeah, absolutely. Like who the hell you're is stupid. You're, you're, for this? You're, you're an idiot. Right. You're stupid. It's business. I could care less what they say. Meet my terms, and I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Now you changed the culture. You don't meet my terms, then we have there's nothing to talk about. Right. You changed the culture in this building because when I first heard the story, I was like, well, why wouldn't Kev just promote the movie on his social media? But then I was like. <laughs> it's my maybe, maybe he got some. Maybe he on to something. What <laughs> I'm gonna tell you? Let me let me tell let me tell you all you people out there with with Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's yours. Mm -hmm. Here's the one thing that businesses have that they can't not not have. Here's here's what they want. Okay, when you when you look at Ticketmaster, when you look at Live Nation, mm -hmm. Live Nation, Ticketmaster are powerful because they have an email base. That's so large mm -hmm. that I can get to all of these people to tell them that these shows are happening. Mm -hmm. all right. Movie studios, TV studios, the one thing that they don't have is a direct connection to the people that watch them the most. It's right. a guessing game. Mm -hmm. I'm ABC. You know what? We want to go and I want to do 75,000 commercials. We don't know who watches, but let's all over. I need to put it out. As a, as a person... When you have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Vine, all this stuff, click of a button, all these people follow you. Right. Gotcha. You know who your fan base is. That's your database. That's yours. Right. That's that's power. Mm -hmm. I don't think people understand how powerful that information is. People people want that. Right. Mm -hmm. You can't just access that. So to get that, treat me as a company the same way that you do media spins and social media spins and this all is in your budget. I should be in your budget because Absolutely. there is no assumption that should be made of Kevin's going to do this for us. Mm -hmm. No. Kevin is supposed to promote a movie, 
accordingly. In other words, I have to do my junkets. I have mm-hmm. to do my publicity tours, right. and I have to go out and do the uh, radio, the radio mm-hmm. tours, whatever it is I'm supposed to do. I have to do that. Kevin Hart's social media is Kevin Hart's. Right. So if you want access into that, you got to pay for it. Pay for it. That's a separate entity. True. You hear Treat that yourself accordingly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm serious. No, but that, I'm, I'm that's dead exactly serious. That's what Marlon Wayans is It's not even an argument. Wayans it shouldn't saying. be an argument. And, and if y'all do have it here, it shouldn't be an argument. That's not theirs. What's theirs is you on the microphone because you're hired to go, yo, hey, I'm such and such. True. You're listening to this, this. That's right. what you're hired to do. You're not hired to go into your pocket and pull out your phone and talk to the people that follow you. True. You know what, That's not what, what you're hired for. What I always wanted to know, why do you, how are you so down to earth? And the reason I say that is usually when a comedian or an artist or an athlete or anybody gets to that status, you don't see them anymore. Mm-hmm. But I still see you we going to the We ain't seen Kevin in two years. No, we, we, we haven't seen no, Kevin. No, y'all haven't. Y'all yeah, haven't. We haven't. <laughs> y'all haven't. But I see Kevin in clubs. I've seen Kev go to movie yeah, theaters. Yeah. I've seen Kev give back in the I'll, hood. I'll say this. He's, he's still a regular guy. Y'all Why haven't seen me here in two years, honestly. It's it's tough. It's tough to get here. Sometimes. <laughs> 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 God just gives it straight to you. No, dude, man, listen, stop, stop. I want I want people to stop with the with the with the famous stuff. But you're a regular guy. But, but that's what I'm saying. Listen, listen. But no, I don't know you about all that. I don't say if I see Kevin Hart, I don't say anything because I'm scared he's not going to respond or he's going to act like he doesn't know me again. I want again. people to stop. And now I'm intimidated. Stop with the famous stuff, man. <laughs> it's it's. I've never seen it's you. It's a word. No, <laughs> man. It's a word. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Am I very successful? Yes. Mm-hmm. It's disgusting right now. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys. Y'all know me. A I'm lot telling of money, you. Listen. Lot of money. It's disgusting <laughs> right, right now. Yeah, yeah. Yo, that that has no effect on you mm-hmm. as a person. I feel like the people that allow this to. To, to to infiltrate the the person the mm-hmm. the team what you do on a day to day you you've been you've been eaten you've been engulfed by the business this this can close man right I'm I'm great today right. tomorrow Hollywood can go yo we're done with him mm-hmm. this door is closed all right. oh my god wait let me let me back in wait where the movies mm-hmm. it can all go away mm-hmm. whoever you treat bad you're going to see again. That, speaking of that, you from the hoods in North Philly. Yes, sir. And you, like you said, you are filthy rich right yes, now. Yes, sir. No, it's disgusting. Who do you, who, who do you, I'm sure everybody got their hand out. Who do you choose who gets what and why? There, there is no who do I choose. I feel like everybody gets a button. Gotcha. Everybody gets to push that button at least at least once. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. I don't care who you, who you are in my life. If mm-hmm. you know me, everybody gets to push a button once. Mm-hmm. How you push that button is up to you. What's the most of you giving up? Somebody. Most? Yeah, the one person. <laughs> what? One, one like a friend. One that, friend, like mm-hmm. yo, Kev, I need a loan for this. Not in a a friend. Okay, I got a friend that just came home <laughs> from jail. Mm-hmm. I've given my friend probably about since he's been home, probably about 60, 70 grand. Wow, I need that button. Where's that button at? Can no, I? It's not, that? This, this, <laughs> no, no, this this button has been pushed a lot, but it's been this has been a repetitive button, and I can't say no. This is one of my closest friends. Okay, it's one of my closest friends, but I can't I can't say no because he's been home for quite some time. But I know what he's going through. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's, it's yo, I'm trying. I'm trying to get this. And it's not the button of, yo, just take this money. He's messing it off. Mm-hmm. He's got a family. He's got gotcha. kids. Mm-hmm. So it's a, this is a, a long button of, here, take care of this. Gotcha. Rent for a long time. Go get the kids this. Mm-hmm. Hey, go get yourself this. Why not give him a job? You don't, you don't want him Can't, around like that? I don't like want that? to do that. I don't want to do gotcha. that. You, you give somebody a job, you got to see it every day. Right. Gotcha. That's a, that's a different type of button. I don't want the dude mm-hmm. that you know can't do the job. Right. <laughs> you just... I, I'd rather give you the money and you can know that I gave you the money and eventually say, hey, man, I can't say nothing to Kev because he stuck by me and he did gotcha. this for me. Giving you a job is different. The, the guys that I have around me are the same guys that have been around me since I started. Mm-hmm. When you bring new people into that into that realm, you now risk that realm falling apart. Gotcha. Oh, it's hard enough to keep those guys happy. No, right? no, no. My guys right now yeah. are great. Mm-hmm. My guys, I got a team. Got it. Yo, we 10 years deep. Plus, I see them out and about all the time. Ten years plus. You gotta I'm watch not, that Naeem though. Naeem, no, here's here's the thing about Naeem. Well, Naeem. We gotta talk about that. The Red Cup boys came up here. I'm gonna tell you. Listen, here's I'm gonna tell you the funny thing about uh, about Naeem and spanking him. 
Naeem and Spank is so stupid. These are some of my closest <laughs> friends. All right. That was their, in their mind, they were being funny. Mm-hmm. They're so bad at doing <laughs> press and marketing. <laughs> let me, let me tell you, let me tell you, how, let me tell you how bad my guys are. Right. This is, this is them before I go back on tour. Right, right, right. They're supposed to be marketing themselves. With the couple of boys. So I'm like, yo, dude, think- y'all gotta do radio. Like, get out there. <laughs> yeah, no, man, Kevin, don't treat us right. Nobody knows you to know you're playing around. Like, mm-hmm. that's their, that's, that's a bit that we do. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Y'all not famous enough to do that, bitch. <laughs> like, we believe yeah, it. like I'm like, dude. I said this. Nobody else knows that y'all are joking. <laughs> right, right. I said like, you look like better dudes on the air. Right, no, right. no, no. They knew we was. Everybody knew we was. They knew we wasn't real. Nobody follows y'all to know that. That's what. That that's what you do. And like, they spent the whole afternoon apologizing on Twitter. Now it was stupid. It was just dumb. I was like, I was like, the whole, I was like, dude. Do you understand that the whole purpose of that interview was wasted by by what you guys? thought would be good as a spank you don't even bathe like you can't <laughs> like spank you can't do that spank's like nah 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 kevin don't treat us right right spank you sound like a you sound like one of oprah's best friends that oprah <laughs> left that oprah left behind but like that that's my guys like right. when i say we're close we're close we've been on tours for i think this is our sixth tour right now mm-hmm. we leave again on the 18th for three weeks mm-hmm. and we i don't i don't I don't do the new. Mm-hmm. It's of the old, and I put pressure on them to, hey, if you don't come better, you can't, you can't come back. Gotcha. So whatever you did last year, mm-hmm. you can't come back when I'm ready to go again with. So the pressure on them is always to put pressure on me. Mm-hmm. Put pressure on me to get on stage and somebody go, yo, my Kevin's opener was funnier than him. Mm-hmm. If I don't have that pressure, you're not serving me a purpose. You're yeah. not, you're not making me better. You're not doing anything to. To service my brand, yo, I'm I'm a smart ass dude. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, you put a book in front of me, tell me to read it and tell you what I read. The I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah. I can't do it. <laughs> but this this business and mm-hmm. and and what I do and how I've picked it up, I I got it, man. Mm-hmm. I got it down pat, and that's why I'm so in love with it, and that's why I go so hard at it. Mm-hmm. Cause I I naturally I get it. Now the wedding ring comes out this weekend. I you damn seen right it. it does. I haven't seen it yet, but I heard you're not the comic relief in this movie. I heard oh, okay. you're the no, this man. is different. This is wait. Is this what you guys were talking about? You got downstairs? That's Star Starbucks. Starbucks. Things have changed here. Vanilla changed. latte. Well, it's not. We don't own it. It's no, we, we don't own it. It's, it's still downstairs. in the building, though. Yeah, it's in the building. It's still big for you guys. You should lie and just say, yeah, yeah, we got a new yeah, yeah, Starbucks machine. <laughs> lie. You guys don't lie enough. Uh, <laughs> wedding ringer, man. This is the best that I've been in the film for the first time. I got to act. Okay. You know, I think uh, I'm at a point in my career now where. I, I get I get all of the yo Kevin Hart funny, but it he the same he the now. Same role. You, play you start the same to get role, yeah. everybody. What I found is everybody's always gonna have something to say. Mm-hmm. There's never there's never enough. Mm-hmm. When enough is enough, then you did something wrong. Right. If nobody has nothing to say, something's wrong. So from Think Like a Man to About Last Night to Ride Along. Granted, I've been different versions of myself, but I've been the the comedy relief in all of these films. Mm-hmm. I come in. Ah 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 ah! I'm out. And wedding ringer for the first time, I get a chance to have levels. This mm-hmm. is me at my best. I get to really act. I'm I'm responsible for driving a story, responsible for driving the emotion. And this is my first rated R comedy that I'm starring in, mm-hmm. where I'm the lead. So right. I got to be that version of myself from stage that people want to see. Like this, yo, I'm I'm not even gonna lie to you. It's my best movie I've done thus far, mm-hmm. thus far. And Get Hard's coming out after. Get Hard's amazing. Mm-hmm. This is this is my That's best movie I've done this far. Right? Yes, on? this is my best movie I've done today. Mm-hmm. Now you, said no... it, you said a lot of people do say you play the same role mm-hmm. in your movies. I guess they want to see like a deeper role, like a, a Jamie Foxx and Ray. You you got something like that in you? Well, people don't know what they want to see. First of all, people people just love the fact that they can say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what people get off on. Mm-hmm. Same way you guys on the radio in the morning. All y'all talk about is you talk about a lot of stuff, but there's always one guy that's gonna go. Man, I swear to God, they don't. All they say is this. Yeah, right, you're right. That's Absolutely. what people do. Yeah. That, that's the nature of the business. Mm-hmm. Um, within me, do I have the the drama side in me? I do, but you don't rush to it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think that comes when it's supposed to come. Mm-hmm. It's it's not as if I've been the guy in the movies for years now. You, I've only literally been able to do movies for the last four years. That's great because I was reading. I think it was Variety or something, and it was like. Kevin Hart just became a household name and ride along. And I mean to us, been a household been around, name. Right. Been yeah. around. Been around. And you know, Chris Rock, Chris Rock, shout out to Chris. He just had an article. Uh he he did it. Yo, this is one of the 
it was one of the most realest things that, that somebody has said dope. where he was talking about how we as black entertainers always have to cross over. But there is no crossover for quote unquote the white movie star, the white entertainer. Right. Chris Rock was talking about his comedians. It's always about us crossing over. And he was saying, Yo, we you know, we do shows where there's twenty thousand, thirty thousand people. And no, you specifically. I know, I don't I'm not saying, <laughs> no, no, I don't want to say I don't want to say that. I'm he trying to keep it. Once again, I'm always PC. You see how I'm trying to keep it broad. Yeah. But he was saying, you know, and, and the one thing that everybody says is Yes, but Kevin's crossing over. He's like, but this audience and this brand that he has is 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 suffice. It's mm-hmm. it's it's doing well. It's mm-hmm. people are loyal to him. So why aren't they crossing over to him? So when you say what you said, man, it makes me think literally about the drama and all of this other stuff. Mm-hmm. It's it comes when it's supposed to. Oscars and everybody who wins them are talented actors. The Golden Globes, the people that win them are talented. But the crazy thing is, what's behind that besides the art? Mm. It's, it's 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 something to really think about, man. And I I saw this the other day when I went at the Golden Globes. And I'm looking at all of these talented actors and actresses, but the people that are there are people who got it first. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Steve Carell has been getting it. Nobody mm-hmm. really knows. He was up for Foxcatcher, and I'm looking at Steve Carell. Besides the show, you go back to all the movies and the money that Steve Carell got as a star. Then Steve Carell said, you know what? Let me go and do some of these indies. Mm -hmm. Mm. Let me go and chase the art now. Mm -hmm. You chase the art after you've won by chasing a box office. Mm -hmm. That's when you chase the art. So everybody wants you to go and chase the art when you just start getting the box office. You just start getting that bread. I just start. I just start. Let me me have some box office success so Mm -hmm. I can then be comfortable enough to chase the art. And if the art don't work... I can be okay when people go, yeah, we done with it. Right. That was stupid. Yeah. You know, it's weird with you because, like, I was reading The Hollywood Report, and it's, you know, you are always happy. And most comedians tap into their pain Mm -hmm. to be funny. You Mm -hmm. tap into the happy to be funny. So I feel like when you do chase the art, you'll probably tap into the pain And when you grew up in Philly broke and your father on drugs. You know what I mean? What? Here's my thing. Right now, what the hell do I have to be mad about, man? Nothing. That's right. What do I have to be mad about? I feel like... When you when you really get to travel in this world, and I ain't gonna get too deep, cause I'm not the deep dude. Mm-hmm. When you really get to going around this world and seeing how bad it is, you understand what you really have. Man, I went somewhere. I went somewhere when we landed before I got to this resort. We we had to drive about forty five minutes to a resort, crazy resort. Mm-hmm. Me and my lady, we want to go to. We land, kids are barefoot. And they got like, uh, it's not even clothes. It's like some, it's just it's just covering. Mm-hmm. It's like some stuff that just covers them. So why the hell is the resort there? Well, don't want no, to talk about this place. That's why I ain't say the place. <laughs> That's why I ain't say the place. I'll tell you, PC, all the time. <laughs> and listen, I thought the same thing. I was like, yo, this resort don't need to be here. <laughs> listen, like, mm-hmm. like the kids are at the airport and like the families are, are begging at the airport. They got their hands out for the people who land. Barefoot, not really clothed. And I was like, it's it's bad out here. Mm-hmm. Like in the world, it's bad. Yo, we don't understand. Yo, we're so bougie. Mm-hmm. Our, our noses and air is so much. And I'm not the change the world, we gotta do this guy. I can't. I'm not that guy. Never have been, never will be. But I understand how blessed I am. Mm-hmm. The day that I start bitching <laughs> about where I am in life is the day that I lost reality. Right. Did you, you ever believe, you, did you ever believe in that tears of a clown thing? Hundred percent. I'm. I'm. No. I can't even. I can't even. No. 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 What I. What I do believe in is this. Yo, man. I got kids. I got kids that look at their dad and go, Yo, my dad is cool. Mm -hmm. I got kids Mm -hmm. that I have to take back to where I grew up to go. Hey, man. This. This isn't. It's not supposed to happen. This don't happen every day. Look. Look. This is what I had. And we're gonna go back to what we have now. We gotta understand that we're blessed. That's so why we got to go give back. We got to go make sure that other people understand that we're good people. I, I put that into my kids. I, I punch it into my kids. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, when I go back home, it's not about me going back home and going, yo, I made it. Get out my face. Philadelphia. Uh! Mm-hmm. And putting my fingers up in there. It's about going, okay, yo, look at these little kids here that think this is it. Mm-hmm. I thought it was it too, but I got out. So how, how do I get them to go, yo, I can get out too? Right. Mm. 
Not to say I don't I don't mess with my city. I can get out, come back to my city, and put something else in my city. Gotcha. I'm a different dude, man. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I think I'm probably one of the dopest individuals on the planet. <laughs> no, no, this is this is. <laughs> I really gave it some thought. Right. I think okay. I'm in the top two dopest individuals. Who's, who's, the one? Who's, the one? Two, who's the other one? <sighs> I'm, I gotta say this, man. When I when I talk to Hove, it it blows my mind mm-hmm. at how that man keeps challenging himself. Mm-hmm. Like from playing around, we we silly, we talk. But I talked to Hove on some. I'm, I just want to be educated, yo. What? Why? Mm-hmm. Why? Why you? What are you doing now? Why? Mm-hmm. Why not? Why? Okay, you did that. Why? Mm-hmm. When you keep looking at the, the things that he's doing right. and the the different, the different circles. Oh, I just saw you. Yo, you was with the mayor of blah blah blah, and hey man, you with the governors? What are you doing? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I'm just you know my political thing, just trying to figure things. Out. What? Why? Why are you doing that? Why not? Why? Why not? Okay. Is it, is it true Hove came to your first show at the Garden and backstage he goes, he goes, how does it feel? <laughs> uh, and you said, oh, it feels good to play the Garden. He goes, nah. I'm to talking have about me here. here. Yeah. yeah. 100%. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Listen. How did you answer that? 100, 100 percent the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm, I'm like, I'm there. He's like, yo, Kevin, I'm coming. I'm like, all right, uh, I'm going to take care of you when you come. And he's like, I'll be there first show. I'm doing the Garden. I sold out the two shows. I told my feel like, yo, you know, young coming. Let's make sure that we set it up for him when he get here. I don't want, I don't want to have no problems. Make sure his seats, whatever he needs is good. He gets there. He comes to the backstage. We talking for a minute. My dad is there, mm-hmm. right? My dad is, like, standing behind me. So a whole shake my head. He's like, how's it feel, yo? I was like, man, <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? You talking about the garden? Like, I sold out the garden twice. I don't know. To have me come. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 you want to listen, you want to say something, but then think about it. Really think about the question. Right. He's like, that means you made it. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's how we felt when he came to Powerhouse. Yo, it's yeah. like, no, you can say what you there. want. You can say what you yeah. want. Mm-hmm. But he deserves that. Right. He deserves the, like, yeah, he's talking trash and being funny, but you deserve that. Absolutely. You get that. Yeah, when he came to the Breakfast Club, it seemed like we did go up from there. Absolutely. Now, they said I, you spilled the drink on Beyonce and Jay one night, too. Oh, man, I spent the, the uh, uh, what is it called? A canister? What What is it? A craft. A, a craft. Yeah, that's what I spilled on them. That was a craft of pineapple juice. I mean, I got a party at uh, Houston, All-Star Weekend, mm-hmm. and he come by. I didn't know he's coming. He ain't tell me. Him and B come by. I'm at the table. Uh, uh. Yeah, <laughs> you know what it is. Yeah. Ho! I'm, I'm on one. Right. Yo, Cap, J, B, like, where, where they at? Where they at? I'm going to go say what's up. I go in the back. What up, boy? Yeah, yeah, yo. Uh, man, good looking. Glad you came out, man. Yo, Kev, don't just leave. Have a drink with me. What you got? I go to reach for something. I I knocked over the whole thing of pineapple juice. On who, though? Uh, it, it was on Jay. It was on Jay first. So it literally <laughs> fell. It <laughs> fell, and it's just spilling. And I'm looking at it. <laughs> he, was like, no, he, was like, he was like, yo, you serious right now? I was, like, <laughs> I was like, what you want me to do? Ain't nothing I can do now. It's gone. It's happening. And as I'm talking to him, B just stuck her head like she was behind him, but I couldn't see her. She's like, what's the hole that's on my leg? He was, like, <laughs> he was like, yo, you got it on my wife, man? I was like, yo, here. I pulled out $20, and I just gave it to him in his hand. I was like, <laughs> I swear to God. I swear to God, I gave him $20. I was like, I was like, just take care of whatever it is. <laughs> I just left. I didn't come back. I, was, I shook his hand with the $20 I left. Now I never know. went back. Now, you also have a new stand-up that you're working on right, mm-hmm. for this year, and you said you want to make $100 million off of this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I think with this one, the goal is to, you know, it's not necessarily to beat and be better than than what was done before me. You know, Eddie Murphy did $50 million in the box office. Mm-hmm. But when Eddie Murphy did that, times were different. Mm-hmm. You know, we're in two different generations. The fact that he has that number is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. You know, from the 80s, yeah. he had a box office number of $50 million from the concert film. Um, the reason why I say that number of $100 million, that's a goal. Uh, the days of concert films were dead. If you really want to be technical, I, I took a chance by bringing them back. Nobody else was doing them. Mm-hmm. I brought them back, and I've had success with the, the ones that I've done. Mm-hmm. Because they were missed. It was unheard of. Nobody in our generation was doing them, especially with stand-up comedy. So now, I set a real goal for myself. This last special, I want to be my last special. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily my last time touring or going on stage, but if I do what I set out to do, Mm -hmm. I don't need to do any more specials. This can be the hoorah. Mm -hmm. I want it to be better than Let Me Explain. 
about production and everything is going to be better than let me explain. So financially, I'm investing more into this and what I invested in. Let me explain. Right. Well, I think I think I read you invested seven fifty. No, that was in life. My pain. Life, my pain. And <laughs> let me explain. I did two point five, two point seven. How much you make off it? I know, I know the first, the it one did. before that you made fifteen. This one did thirty three. Wow. Damn. Let let me explain. Did thirty three. Oh, where you gonna <laughs> shoot it? Garden? No, I'm gonna do a stadium in Philadelphia. Stadium. Philadelphia. Whole thing is I'm going, I'm going back home. I've never done anything in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Life of my pain. I went back to show where I live, but I never done a special. So mm-hmm. I want to do a stadium in Philadelphia, and to do a stadium for stand up comedy is unheard of. Right. So I'm doing stadiums on this tour. I'm gonna do arenas and stadiums. Do you wow. feel like the biggest comedian in the, wor- in the world? I don't think you, about it. Yeah. I don't think about it. I think the day you think about it and the day you, you stand out and say, I'm the biggest comedian in the world is the day that you lost sight of where you are and what you're doing. Right. I, I love the fact that I'm at a point where y'all got a fan base. Mm-hmm. People people support me. People genuinely appreciate what I do. That's what I love. Right. I'm not the biggest comedian in the world because there's so many comedians out that do so many different things. Mm-hmm. I talked to Louis C.K., for a long time the other day. Louis C.K. just did the guard. Mm-hmm. You know, do people really know about it? Are people talking about it? No. Louis C.K. is one of the dopest comedians that I I, I know mm-hmm. from writing, from hand to the pen. I know him. Uh, within what we do, Chappelle, Chappelle quietly did a tour where Chappelle was playing outdoor arenas. Mm-hmm. Outdoor. Mm-hmm. Outdoor, understand. I don't think nobody understands that. Mm -hmm. That's the worst place to do comedy. Why is that? Because you're outside. You can't can't give people a chance to be ignorant. Mm -hmm. Chappelle didn't care. You can't give people a chance to smoke, be loud, talk, yell, get the car. You can't do that Mm -hmm. for comedy. Chappelle did that. He made outside cool and did and did a a tour. It's it's quiet. It's 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 different. Chris Rock about to go back on tour. Mm Chris Rock, one of my mentors. Chris Rock is going to do numbers on tour. What he decides to do with his tour is what he decides. But we all are smart in making it our own. Right. So when people try to say, Kevin, you're the biggest comedian in the world, I don't I can't I can't invest in that information because I still look at what my my guys are doing. Me and Seinfeld did comedians in cars, and Seinfeld was like, I'm thinking about going out. And yeah, but Seinfeld does like two thousand seaters or twelve hundred seaters. But when Seinfeld does it, it's quiet, it's unheard of. Tickets go in five minutes. Mm-hmm. So everybody is successful within whatever realm they decide to be successful in. That's what I love. Mm-hmm. I love the fact that as a comedian, I look at my comedian brothers, my mm-hmm. peers, and go, yo, I love this because we've set each other up. Right. And I think the comedians that look at each other that that are negative about another man's success are the ones that aren't happy with themselves. What's your relationship with Mike Epps? We see you going back and forth with Mike Epps. Some days you're cool, some days you're not. Here's the thing, man. <laughs> Mike, Mike just Mike... it on top five. Okay. Listen, listen, man. I, I don't... And I, I really want everybody to understand this. Mm-hmm. Mike got Mike got Richard Pryor, mm-hmm. the movie, right? Mm-hmm. This is after everything happened, me and Mike went back and forth. First of all, as a man, I respect any man that's doing what he loves to do mm-hmm. and that's successful at it. As a comedian... I respect any comedian that is professional enough to have built themselves to a point to where they can be called a guy who's become a headliner Mm -hmm. and a ticket sale. Gotcha. When me and Mike went through everything we went through, I got mad at Mike because I'm like, what'd I do to you? Mm -hmm. I ain't do nothing to you. What? Don't come at me when I'm not, I'm not, I didn't say nothing. I didn't didn't say nothing to you. So now that you came at me, I'm going to say something back. Mm Mm-hmm. But we men first. Let's talk. All right, say whatever you gotta say. And then if we if we don't like what we said to each other, now let's go and let's mm-hmm. let's be those guys about it. Right. After me and Mike talk, yay. Done. Kev, you're right. Mike, you're right. That's not what we're about. Okay. Moving on from it. I can't I can't invest time in looking at another guy's path. Mm-hmm. I can't control that. Today or tomorrow, no matter how much I root for you. Yo, man, Charlemagne, God, man, I hate when he on the radio in the morning. Mm-hmm. I can't control that. Somebody else loves it. Right. Why am I investing time in hating what you do or don't do? That's the same thing with me and Mike. I don't, there is no negative feeling. I mm-hmm. want you to win. When he got the movie, I called him. Mm-hmm. Yo, Mike, I swear to you, regardless of what's happening between us, and that's, that's, that's dope. Right. Hey, man, knock that out the park, because if you do, your life is going to change immediately. Conversation lasted 
17 seconds. Mm-hmm. Cat, that's real. I respect you for that. All right, man, be safe. I'm done. I said what I had to say. I complimented you because I want to show you where I am as a person. Right. I don't have, I don't got no negative bone in my body, man. Mm-hmm. I'm a millionaire. If I'm telling jokes, I'm not unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you think there's room for more than one black comedian in Hollywood? There's, there's, there's 37 doors. <laughs> yeah. Choose one. Choose one. That's the other thing they say. Oh, it's only one at a time. It's not. It's one at a time because when it's one at a time, everybody's busy talking about the one that came through the door mm, right. instead of everybody really figuring out a way to go through the other doors. Mm. I'm going to tell you the power when we talk about social media and the internet. You got a free, a free gateway now. Mm-hmm. TV is getting old. Everybody goes to the internet. You can build yourself and build your fan base. And let me tell you something. When those numbers come virally... Advertisers come right behind it. Mm-hmm. Hey, I heard this guy gets a lot of numbers on his page. I want to promote my product. Hey, let's put it on his page. Go click on a random person on you on YouTube that get a lot of views. Guarantee you see a commercial on his page. Mm-hmm. Guarantee you that person isn't smart enough to know, wait, I should be getting paid from this. Right. But that person is probably going to a person that's posting his stuff, and that person that he's going to is getting paid for posting his stuff. Right. There's money in anything you do. Nothing's free. But people don't understand the business of it. So when, when I hate to say it, when black comedians, black comedians are so money hungry off the back. Nobody want to sit back and, and take a raping for a second. Mm-hmm. Nobody want <laughs> no, just I hate to say it. Like I hate to say it. I hate to say it. Listen, I hate to say so it. How do you feel about the Bill Cosby situation? Hey, listen. Hey, brother. What a listen, segue. No, back to the raping. Yeah, take to the raping. I, I answer this and, I, it's and about then I'll financial go there. Raping. Great segue. Good segue. By the way. <laughs> Uh, but when I say that, they're so afraid, they're so afraid to not make money for a second to make money in in, in seven months. Right. Yeah. Everybody's afraid to sit back and learn and go. All right, I ain't gonna make no money right now, but y'all probably can by being with these guys and getting this information and going here. Or to spend money investing in yourself. Everybody's afraid. Mm-hmm. Everybody's afraid to fail to win. You gotta. Mm-hmm. It, it don't. It's not always a win, but when you fail first, you go. Okay. Yep. Got it. Yeah. But now I know these guys. Right. So yeah, I failed and I, I lost a little bit of money, but this guy here likes me now, man. Sir, do you mind doing this thing with me, man? I'm, I'm just starting out. It's it's something and everything, but you got to look at the something that's three blocks down. Gotcha. You had a lot of failures early. That's what you learned what? from. So you had your sitcom. <laughs> what? Well, that was on NBC, right? You want to Google me and see these <laughs> pilots that, that didn't work? Soul you know, plane. Man, call me Mr. Television Show that never got there. I got. <laughs> I think I had about ten pilots. Damn. <laughs> I had about 10 pilots that didn't work. And mm-hmm. every one, my manager said, this could be the one. <laughs> you know, and you've had the same manager since the same beginning manager. of your career. I don't change nothing. Mm-hmm. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And now that I've gotten here, I'm not trying to go find the people that are, quote unquote, the big dogs. And No, I keep my same team. Are there any roles you turn down? Because it seems like you do everything. Uh, what did I turn down, man? I turned down, the one role I regret, uh, Tropic Thunder. Mm. Uh. Brandon T. Jackson, mm-hmm. he he got the part, mm-hmm. but but in my defense, it was a uh, first of all before I say this, I'm politically correct um, to the gay community. I respect and appreciate any and everything that you all do, and as people, mm-hmm. I love you. This was a the part was way it was it was gayer, yeah. In the beginning, like the dude was he was doing a lot of stuff in the draft. <laughs> the draft that I read, mm-hmm. he was like, "Yo, come on, man, let me let me." Second. Yeah, it was a lot of. <laughs> yo, I'm, I'm not saying it, it was real. Right, right, right. It was real flagrant. You it was a lot of. It was a lot of stuff, and I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. It's, but could you play a gay role? No, not because I'm not, not because I have any ill will or disrespect. It's because I feel like I I can't do that because I don't think, I don't think I'm really going to dive into that role 100 <laughs> percent because of the insecurities about myself trying to play that part does that right. make sense yeah like what i think people are going to think while i'm trying to do this is going to stop me from playing that part the way that i'm supposed to mm-hmm. i'm not at that acting point in my career now seven years later when i'm done this part and you say hey kevin i thought you said you would never do it i'm at a point where i wanted to take a chance this role made sense the story gotcha. made sense i may do it everybody got on me Everybody got on me about the dress on SNL. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yo, you said you would never do it. Thought I wouldn't. They presented the sketch. I thought it was funny. Right. I, I was like, yo, I kind of look like the little girl. That would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> the little girl had a short haircut. What she did was funny. I was like, yo, I'm going to do it. Did I see myself doing that? No. Mm-hmm. But Did you think about it beforehand when they came with the dress? He was like, 
My God, you really offered no. me the dress. Hundred percent no. I didn't listen until I did it afterwards, and, and somebody posted, "You a sellout. You a dress." I'm See, like, I told y'all. I was like, "Wait, what?" Matter of fact, somebody posted. This guy posted a video. He was like, "Yo." Kevin Hart let the white man get him. And look, remember he said this? I don't know where he got the clip, but it was me going, I would never wear a dress. And then, and then I came out and I got the dress on. <laughs> on SNL. And I was like, I just watched it. I was like, he's good. Whoever it is, is good. That's a great edit. Let's just acknowledge that. Never say but, never. Yeah, but you can't, you don't know. You don't know what tomorrow holds. Now, right. I, once again, if I get to that point where I want to challenge myself in the business mm-hmm. and I'm I'm all about the art, who knows right. if that's the right artsy piece that can get Kevin Hart an Oscar and show a different act in town. But right now, it's not it's not on the drawing board. Yeah, but board. dude whisper chocolate dropper next to you with it's his not shirt on. The drawing on. Board, <laughs> hey, it's not on the drawing board. It's tough right now. Now one of the I, I read in Hollywood reporter that you want to be a, a big international uh, actor now, mm-hmm. but uh, one of the Hollywood executives in the Sony email said African American leads can't be big internationally. What, what that's what, that's what sparked the whole the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know the the emails and all the stuff from the Sony. Like I told you guys, I'm none of that stuff shocked me. Right. It didn't blow me away. Uh, but I was mad. I was mad at the Sony execs because when I did, you know, the Think Like a Man's mm-hmm. the about last night, um, I did. One, two, three, four. I, I have four movies with Screen Gems. Mm-hmm. So it's not really Sony. Screen Gems, which is a smaller version of Sony. I was mad because I was like, yo, give me a chance to to go and, and promote my movies over here. And it was like, we're not going to market these movies out there because we have to invest in that. And these movies don't translate well over there. Mm-hmm. And for a while, I took it as like, yo, you're not giving, you're not giving, they're not giving black movies a shot. They're not doing that. Mm-hmm. And that's not the correct answer. It's not that they're not giving black movies a shot. It's that the movies don't, don't do the translate. They don't do the business over there because mm-hmm. it's hard to market the movies internationally. Domestically, mm-hmm. we get it. We can we know how to market these movies domestically. The fan base is going to watch them. But internationally, it's different. Right. Whether we want to acknowledge it or not, it is. It's not even about race. It's, it's not just giving these black movies a shot. It's not that. Mm-hmm. It's... They don't perform well. So I said, well, how can I, as a black actor, a black entertainer, put myself in a position to do movies that can be marketed internationally? What works? Action, comedy, broad comedy, broad action. What is it? Mm -hmm. They said, well, honestly, if you want to go down a trail, it's stuff that they can relate to on an eye level, on a broad level. Things that they can see and go, we get that, we want to see that. That's how the wedding ringer came about. Mm-hmm. The wedding ringer wasn't an accident. This was all in the conversations that I was having with them about my next project. Mm-hmm. I said, "Well, I don't, I don't want to just be a star here. Mm-hmm. I want, I want what Will had, like Will Smith, Tom Cruise, mm-hmm. and you know, when you look at George Clooney and all these guys, they're so great at what they do. But yo, why shouldn't I want that success? Mm-hmm. And when you tell me how they got that success, I want a chance to get it." Mm-hmm. Give me the material that's going to put me over that water gotcha. where I can go and promote it. And for a while I sat. You know, it looks like I'm working all the time to y'all. Mm-hmm. Yo, I'm slated three or four years out. You know, Wedding Ringer was slated when I did Think Like a Man 2. Mm-hmm. I, I read the script and we were done. I was slated to start doing that movie a year after I was done. Mm-hmm. Right now, Wedding Ringer is coming out. Get Hard comes out in March. I'm slated to do a movie with The Rock. In the end of April, mm-hmm. Ride Along Two is coming out, 2016 Martin Luther King weekend again. Mm-hmm. After that, Central Intelligence is gonna probably come out Martin Luther King weekend 2019 or mm-hmm. 18. My new comedy special is gonna come out 18, 19. I slayed everything years in advance, mm-hmm. but what I'm doing is when I take these movies, if you can't promote me internationally, I don't want to do the movie. Right. Mm. If you can't put me in a position to go over that water and really back a film and get to the people that I don't know, mm-hmm. I don't want to do the movie. I see what you're doing. That's why you're positioning yourself doing movies with Pharrell. Everybody, it's broad. The Rock. It's yeah, broad. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. it's not just on a, oh, Kevin Hart's getting bigger. It's a smart decision. Gotcha. I want the guys that can take me over that water. I'm going to tell you the real reason why. End of the day, the movies are a bonus. I'm a comedian. Mm-hmm. When this special comes out, 
Mm -hmm. I care about my stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. I want my stand-up comedy to be in Germany. Gotcha. I want to be over there in Australia. Mm -hmm. I want to be the comedian that really went everywhere mm -hmm. and then put out a concert film that performed everywhere. Right. So I'm using the movies to position me to put me everywhere. I have no problem with saying that. Okay. Because that's that, the overall plan. That if you don't have a plan, okay. if you don't have a plan, you don't have a map, and you don't know where you're going, you're just doing stuff just to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say it's different about me and everybody else. It's not an accident. The things you see me doing are an accident. It's a plan. It's mapped out. Well, this leads to my final question. What can elevate Kevin Hart to the level of legends? Because, I mean, you're red hot right now, mm -hmm. but what can put you in that Seinfeld, Chappelle, Cosby, Murphy, prior realm? I think, I think the one thing, first of all, it's, when we talk about those guys, we talk about those mm -hmm. guys because they're all on a pedestal. I'm never going to surpass any of those, any of those people, mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. you, it's 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 never going to happen. We talk about basketball. You talk about Michael Jordan. You talk about Kobe. You talk about LeBron. I don't care what people say; they can never surpass Michael Jordan. Absolutely, never. I don't care. LeBron and and Kobe stats may go above and beyond what Michael did, but you're never going to surpass what he did for the game. Right, absolutely. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. What Pryor, what Eddie Murphy, what, I mean. Rock. Jesus Christ, yeah. Rock. I mean, th there's a list. Seinfeld, George Seinfeld. Carlin, there's a list. What they did for comedy was open up doors for guys like myself to come in. What I can do right now for our generation is go, that was our guy. Right. That's it. For our generation, the goal is to go, Kevin Hart was our guy. We remember when he did. And I got to give him stuff to talk about. I got to give you specials to talk about. I got to give you movies to talk about. I have to give you things to point to. So when it's all said and done and I decide to sit down and go, I'm tired, yo, I can't, I'm, I'm done, you're going to look back at my body of work and go, what? Mm -hmm. He did What? I'm going to have a box DVD set of seven things, of 12 movies, of six gotcha. specials, of here's what he produced. My company stands alone without me walking in my office. That's when I've done enough. Now, Wedding Ringer comes out this weekend, and mm -hmm. how important is first weekend sales? It's very important. You know, I think if I have another movie that bangs in the box office, it's just what I'm doing right now is taking, you're, you're, you're taking the, the Kenny out of studios. Gotcha. Right now, studios go, no, Kevin's, he's, he's, he's really a draw. Mm -hmm. Wedding Ringer comes out and bangs. It's a different movie for me. You've never seen me promote this type of film. It's my first crossover, broad, that they want to call it, film. This is the movie that they're promoting, and I can show you posters in Germany. So right this is the most important one right now. For me, it's right. the most important film. And you feel like it's been the best role you've It's played. the best role that I've done. And more importantly... Because it's the first time I got to do a film that is, it's a multicultural situation. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah. Whereas in Ride Along, Think Like a Man, and About Last Night, because of the poster, because of the cast, the assumption that comes with it is, oh man, I've just, oh man is that a black movie or is it not? You don't, you, you assume off the back, this is a movie that appeals to everyone. Everybody's in it. Well, well, make sure you go see this movie this weekend. Go and, see and, it. And, and, Kevin Hart. And, and, and we Kevin Hart's still you. keeping it real because he over here with some ashy ankles, no yeah, socks. Yeah, because no, no. I'm really ashy. <laughs> I'm be honest with you guys. Kev it's almost, so listen, real. Yeah. I'm be honest with you guys. This almost didn't happen. Wayne had to come in my room this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I gave Wayne a key last night. We got it. I got it done. You know, I'm doing SNL this week. Yeah. So the, the tapings are late. So, you know, we, we were in there until probably like 12 a.m. And when I got done, I went to the comedy club to try to work on some material. And I was in the comedy club drinking, talking to some old friends. I just gave Wayne my key. I said, in the morning, you better get me up. Come get me. I'm not going to do it. So I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't, I didn't wash <laughs> my ass. This is this oh, my goodness. <laughs> no, this is, if we're going to be That's honest. That's we need to hear. Well, we're, we're, listen, I talked to you guys. I talked to you guys. I, this oh, is one a, more thing. I'm going to tell you something else that was funny, and I don't think you meant to be funny. Go ahead. <laughs> your your, ex, your ex-wife's reality show came on, <laughs> and then you tweeted out a picture of you just proposing <laughs> to was your woman. A complete accident. Man, I tweeted out. I said, Cavs comedic timing is amazing. Listen, listen to me. <laughs> and you know what? I'm glad, I'm glad you brought this up. Uh, I, I hope we're not about to, to go. I'm going to tell you something. A, that 
that was a hundred and ten percent an accident. Okay. I I had no. It was idea. her birthday. Listen, it was Iniko's thirtieth birthday. Mm-hmm. Like, once again, everything I do is planned. <laughs> that night was planned. Yeah. Sure. When I did it, it was after the surprise party. We sat down and ate dinner. And then I proposed. <laughs> everybody pulled out the cameras, taking pictures, and everybody was posting it. That were there. It was a. It was. It was just a freak of freaking nature. To my ex-wife, let me tell you something about me. And my ex-wife. I don't care what my ex-wife does or has said or has done. That's the mother of my kids. Mm-hmm. You've never heard me disrespect right. my ex-wife in any way, shape, or form. It's the mother of my kids. I respect her. I will always respect her. I treat her the way that I'm supposed to. I don't care if we fight today, fight tomorrow. It's the mother of my kids. The mother of my kids is always going to be on a pedestal. Gotcha. Because you're the mother of my kids. So there is, I, I want the, all the people that read the media and understand something. Yo, I talk to this woman every day. Mm-hmm. Not because I, I have to, but because I want to. Gotcha. That's the mother of my kids. Did she call you and say, nigga, you did that on purpose? I, listen, we, we go at it at times. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. We go at it. But that's the mother of my kids. I'm not going to sit up here and say it's all peaches yeah. and we the, you know, we're the perfect family. But that woman is going to be respected because she should be. Gotcha. That's my, that's my kid's mom. And do that's, her, do that's her and Aniko get along now? Yeah, hold now on, they do. Hold on, yeah, hold on one now, second. Now they do. So um, Aniko, she gets along with your ex now. Now they do. Okay, that's now, good. Because I see it with now. the kids and everything, everybody's happy. It I just actually, took some time. I actually uh, recently called Tori and gave Tori like the biggest compliment ever. Because Tori reached out after the new year and just said, I want our relationship to be better. And I thought that was dope on Tori's side. I mean, it's not that they never got along and they just beefed and, you know, fought. They just don't talk. Right. Mm-hmm. They just don't talk at all. Like, literally, they don't talk. Right. It's not that they're, they've never been ignorant towards one another or, mm-hmm. you know. They just don't exist in each other's they lives. They just don't don't talk. And I get it, but I was like, it's stupid. Mm-hmm. But I'm not, you know, as a guy that's in between that situation. <laughs> You're not jumping in. I'd rather you, you not hey, talk than. I don't see nothing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I act as if everything fight, is do it cool. Outside. I act as if it's cool. Hey, 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 everybody, all right. We out? Okay, yeah. mm-hmm. all right. But now, now that they've been talking and communicating, I just think it's great. It's great. You know, in my kids' eyes, uh, Iniko and Tori get along. They've mm-hmm. never exchanged bad words Good. in front of my kids or bad vibes. But where they are now is dope because whatever my kids see, it's it's elevated now. Mm-hmm. That's all I care about. I don't care about nothing else. I just That's care about great. my babies. So that means Tori will be at the wedding and everything. Uh, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Tori, I know Tori ain't going to come to the wedding. If she wanted to, she could. I don't. Mm-hmm. Listen, I'm telling y'all, man, you. Y'all really do not understand what you're dealing with mm-hmm. within this whole Kevin Hart realm. <laughs> I, I don't care, man. I, <laughs> listen, I am such a cool dude, man. I'm I'm the shoulder shrugger. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. I'm I'm happy, man. Unless it is life threatening to Heaven or Hendrix, you will not get my attention. There you go. That's it. Like I mean, my fiance, my family. All of that stuff, that's all back here in this box. This box, if you if you open that box and start to dig in that, then you really can ruffle my feathers. Other than that, Wow, you know, that was a pause for every moment. <laughs> open this box. Get back here. Box. 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 Get back here. Open this box. No, now, now that you say it like that, I should have said it. I definitely should have should have curbed that. Uh, sentence. That's really my final question. Mm-hmm. Was there really a school days too with you and Drake, directed by Spike Lee? Uh, I think they're doing that movie. I was never, I was never involved. Oh, I'm not involved. Okay, I'm not, I'm not doing that film. But if they are doing that movie, shout out to Spike and Drake. It, it'll be dope. But yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not in. <laughs> we appreciate you. Better come PC. on offer too, man. Next they time, can't you, you better time. Time. When is he Every two years is too too long. Man. Hey, I'm be honest with you guys. I don't really have time now. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen to me. <laughs> I'm gonna be a hundred percent out of jail. Yo, I really should be sleep. I gotta be. I think I got an hour, and I got to be at SNL from 11 to, I think, 1 a.m. today. Thanks. Well, SNL, listen, here, man. SNL schedules is ridiculous. But, yo, I love y'all. Y'all we know that. We appreciate you, bro. Because I'm here so now. Here, you. Man. Thank I love you. Y'all. You came up here and dropped some knowledge this morning, man. I appreciate, I appreciate it, man. appreciate that. Hey, on my walkout, I want to apologize for my pants. These some workout Get pants. Get the pants, Listen, I just want to apologize for these workout <laughs> pants I got on. I don't want Get y'all thinking it. This is how I'm working. Let them know keeping it real. This is what's going on with me right now. I don't want y'all this to be a representation of where I am in life. (laughs) (laughs) It's the Breakfast Club. It's Kevin Hart.